Hey guys, what's up? My name is Matt Workman for Cinematography Database, and today we're going to be talking about lighting and shooting a white psych music video. This is kind of a hybrid video where we're going to talk about lighting and talking about camera work because the music videos, the, the DP really gets to be the artist quite a bit, and you have a lot of control. So hopefully if you're going to try to approach a music video like this in the future, that this will help you in some way. So before we get into the lighting and the camera work, I'm going to say that this is a music video at around, I would say the three, like the two to three star level of execution. Now it's the high two stars, of course, for indie stuff. Um, and it's like probably pretty moderate for a three star music video, which there aren't that many of these days. Um, I'll say that for some context, this is going to come off as a humble brag that about one or two years out of college, I was shooting music videos this big and bigger, not super frequently, but I was shooting them every once in a while. I'll flash you some photos. One of them was for Akshay Kumar, who is a Bollywood star, and Snoop Dogg. This was in Chicago at RDS Studios, or Stages. Um, it's actually a stage bigger than this, because this back wall here is about 100 feet wide. And uh, about that many space lights, we actually had more lights than I'm going to be using here. And on that music video, we had a Jimmy Jib and I think four cameras with a dolly, a slider, a bunch of different operators. It was a big job. Long story short, if you end up in a situation like that, I had to do a lot of research to be able to prepare myself to be able to light that and shoot it. And I hope that if you get yourself in a situation like that, that this video will help you out because I needed help back then. So that's why I'm doing this. So let's get right into the lighting and the camera work. So let's look at this stage here. So this stage, like I said, this is a hundred feet right here. That's about a hundred feet long, which is a big stage, but it's not the biggest. There are bigger ones. Um, let's see what else here. They're hard to see, but these are space lights. They're white against white, so it's not the best, but there's one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I screwed up six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and that's rough. So what you'll realize, hopefully, is that we have this very bright white wall. And the, what we want to think of this is not a white wall that has light against it. We want to think of the entire cove as a light source. Like if it was a gigantic LED wall of LEDs and it was emitting light, that's the way you want to think about it moving forward. At least that's the way that I think about white psychs. Now, what's special about this white psych is that the floor here is not white and it's not matte paint, like a, like a, like a psych that has a floor. In this case, this flooring is actually black plexi or black rubber mat, which is what I've used on my bigger music videos. Black plexi, that big would be very expensive. I've actually done music videos about this size where we've used this rollout rubber mat that seams up very well so you don't see the seams and it's reflective and black just like this is. So this is kind of a black mirror, it's black plexi, it's black plastic. That's what the floor is. And what you'll see here is that, especially from this high angle, is that this black floor picks up the reflection of the white wall. It's slightly grayer and there's something happening with the Fresnel effect, but I'm not gonna dive into the Fresnel effect on this video. Just look at this though, pretty cool. So they are in full silhouette. The only light source here are these space lights and this back wall. So they're in full silhouette because there's no light from the front. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to add this over here. And this is going to be two Airy or Ari T12 12K tungsten Fresnels. Both of these lights are going to shoot into this 20 by frame here. This is a 20. Wow. I should use a smaller pen. This is a 20, pen, 20 by 20 grid cloth right here. And that is the only active light we're going to be using on this music video. It's coming from the side. And then let's look, let's look through the camera at what effect that has. So here is the shot through the camera with no lights on or just the psych lights, no, no key light yet, right? So full silhouette. But what I want to pay, what, what I want to call attention to uh, is this horizon line. This is very important on a music video like this. This is going to be pretty subtle uh, in real life, but on, in CG it's a little more defined. It's the line where the reflection starts and the white ends. Right? So very important where you place that. It has a lot to do with, in my opinion, how an art-directed white psych music video like this goes down. Fully silhouette, but you'll see that these drums picking up the reflection of the cove here, and also the cymbals picking up some of the reflection, and he is having his face, because it's probably a little bit shiny, is having reflections right into the white wall as well. And you'll see here, this shiny floor gives us this, basically lighting the floor for free, and these very cool, shiny, and sharp to blurry reflections that are going on. So let's look what happens when we add the key light. So this is the lighting without any key light. Let's see what happens when we turn on our key light. So it's very subtle, right? Very subtle. What we have here are these beautiful silhouettes, and the human mind the brain, your eyes, you are dialed in to recognizing silhouettes. I think this came from um, when we were like 
hunters and gatherers and like you're hunting in the woods and you looked off in the horizon and from really far away from really far away you could either tell that a silhouette was a deer and you're going to go get that deer for dinner or it was another human you had to get ready to fight ready to brawl that's the psychology or physiology evolution of silhouettes that i've heard and i, I completely buy it strong silhouettes are really important it's the strength of a white psych music video every light that we add to a white psych music video from this point on is basically ruining that silhouette effect so we want to be really subtle with it and here is very subtle. Now that huge light, it looks like it would be adding a lot of light, but it's actually really far away. And that has to do with the fall off. With the scene that you're lighting a volume that big, you actually have to keep the light source far away so that the fall off is, is less. I'm not gonna get into the math behind it, but here is the way that I key these type of music videos. You'll see that it's still basically silhouette. We've basically added mm, like two stops, you know, from darkness into the, uh, into the scene. Still very half lit, lit from the side. This is the look we're going to move forward with, and I'm going to show you some coverage and some music and some um, some coverage and some different ways that we affect this lighting without having to do too much more. It's a really powerful technique, and I will say that if you go and execute this music video style on a smaller budget or a budget that's just like this, it will get you work. This type of lighting got me work early on, and it continues to. It's actually really cool for like an Apple commercial or anything that's like a glossy studio. This is what we're going for here. It's going to be a black plexi floor with a solid white. Blow it out. Blow it out. Two stops over. Three stops over. Four stops over. Whatever it takes on your camera. Blow it out. Maybe talk to your colorist. Blow out the back wall and let it reflect into the floor. Let's move on to the next part. So what I'm going to do here is one camera move. So here's another view of our set. And here's our Fisher dolly down here. Should I drown it? I guess so. Here's the Fisher dolly. We are on an Alexa, and so you know that first shot that we framed up, and this shot here is going to be a 32 millimeter. So this is an Alexa at 16 by 9 HD. So not open gate or any of those weird ones, just the standard 1080 Alexa. And this is a 32 mirror, 32 millimeter spherical lens, and we're going to be cropping the 240 squeeze here. So we see again our big lights over there, our one light source that's a big 20 by 20 frame, and this silhouette section section here. So the camera is going to dolly in like that and dolly back. This is what I would call the moving master shot. You're going to be using this quite a bit. So let's look through the camera at what that looks like. So here it is again, our almost silhouette shot, but with a little bit of fill in there. And this is the wide. And what I'd like to call out here is that look at the distance between, um, should I draw on this? It's kind of th throw out the effect, but the distance between here and the distance between here is the same. That's how you frame up an ultra wide like this, in my opinion. I'm actually going to delete those because I think that's going to distract later. And then the, d the camera moves in. And now we're at what I would call kind of like a commercial full shot or a commercial head to toe. So again, even headroom, even foot room, basically the same shot, just a little bit closer. This is enough so that you could use this for a commercial uh, and still see everybody and, and see like your A-list talent there. And then we push all the way into kind of a three quarter shot. You would normally cut out before then. You might even dolly all the way in to a medium shot or closer, but in that case, you would probably see, because you're starting this wide, you would see the track. So actually, to move from this shot all the way into that shot, and, and further, actually, you would need a techno crane because you would see the track of the dolly. So we'll look at this again really quickly. Ultra wide, head to toe, three-quarter shot. So that is the dolly move that I would suggest. Definitely start there. And let's move into our hero's close-up. So this is going to be the most important close-up of the entire music video because this is the lead actor. This is the star here. We want this to be right. And what we're going to do is because the key light is to the right side, we're going to move the camera to the left side of the talent so that the key light is a far side key. And you'll see what that looks like right here. So here's the camera position. We're about head level. We're pretty level on the tilt, not much going on there. And we've got a little bit of a tilt to the right. So let's see what that looks like here. That's going to look like this. So pretty cool shot. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, what is very clean about this is this profile here. This line that, that is basically his face against the white. That's what we want to preserve. And what's also strong in this type of music video, and I, I'm very much uh, influenced by uh, Flyleaf and uh, Foo Fighters. I'll link to the, some of the music videos that are kind of like this in the bottom, is that when you do the coverage of this, you don't typically do singles, or you do every once in a while, but I think what is really strong is to have one person here, and then because it's a widescreen frame, you have another person on the other third. And we'll look at how you change that up. That's one of the strongest things I think about this type of music video, is that you see two people performing at once, one out of focus. I think it's really cool. I like it. But what we don't like here, in my opinion, is all this return fill light here. So see all this light on his face? All this stuff, 
Uh, we don't really want that for him. We want to make him a little bit more heroic. So how do we get rid of that? We're going to add some negative fill. So here we have a big 12 by 12 solid. And you put it right up next to him, right into the point where the flag would be, or the solid would be in the frame. That's what's going to go down. Uh, so let's look at it. Here is the shot without the negative fill. There is the negative fill. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at through the camera now. So here is the shot with the negative fill. You'll see that this side is fully silhouette, and full silhouette looks great against white. Like I said, silhouettes, humans, we like it. We want to do that here. We want to add just a little sliver from the key light right there, and it's almost, I, I'm actually underexposed here. I'd say this is a stop underexposed. You can play with that in color correction, of course. And then we're going to add one more thing to this that makes it even cooler, I think. So here it is. No negative fill. Look at the hand. Look at, this is kind of messy. I don't really like this core shadow that's going on there. Boom, negative fill. That's why you use negative fill. You need negative fill on a white psych. If all you did on a white psych commercial or music video was turn on space lights, bring one key light and one negative fill, in my opinion, you could execute perfectly the entire, the entire photography of it. So what we're gonna add next is a flare because we're, we're cool like that. Music videos like flares, they just do. Um, you can shoot with anamorphic lenses, you can shoot spherical, you could add them in post. Flares look cool, they add a little bit of something to it, I think. I mean, it's everyone likes lens flares, right? I don't think I'm gonna have to convince anybody on that. So here's what it looks like with the lens flare. We have a source four right there, shooting directly into the lens, but of course not getting direct light onto the talent. That's why a source four is pretty good for that. And there it is, there is the same shot with the flare. So let's look at the progress. Here's the shot, framed up nicely, I like it. This is, I believe, a 65 millimeter on the Alexa. Again, spherical with a crop, uh, but no negative fill. It's a little bit messy, a lot of return light. Here's the negative fill added, much cleaner, much more graphic, very, very graphic look. And there we added the flare, it kind of hazes it out, adds a little bit of low contrast like everybody loves these days. And the flare, we're doing good stuff. This is stuff that's actually pretty affordable to do. It doesn't take a lot of lights. It does if you're gonna have a huge set like this, but picture that you could do this on a pretty small set if you didn't need to see their feet and do that master shot. That master shot is kind of the reason you would have to do a shot uh, you have to shoot on such a big stage. Say you want to do a big dolly shot side to side, you need a big stage to do that. But you could do these shots against probably a 20 foot white psych. You just have to keep moving everybody around. So let's move into the last part of this here. We're going to do some coverage here. So our first shot we're going to do for coverage is a medium shot of our bassist. Now I know the bassist is one, not wearing shoes and two, using a guitar. I didn't have a 3D model of a bass, so he's holding a guitar. Sue me. Uh, what we want to do is foreground our lead singer here, but not show his face, and be out of focus, and then we want to put our bassist in the other third. And that's going to look like this. So I think that this would actually cut pretty well. We would cut from like this wide shot to the singer, back to the wide shot, and back to the bassist, that sort of thing, right? So I think that these all feel kind of similar in that way. Uh, and that was the idea. So we're kind of keeping one person on the third and in focus, one person on the other third or foregrounding them. And it gives us a little bit of perspective to where they are. Because if you just do singles the whole time, uh, I think you lose a little bit of the strength of this triangle formation that we're doing with the band. I'm not going to talk about band formations. There's a lot of different ones for music videos. This is a triangle formation for a three-person band like Muse. Pretty straightforward. Uh, here's our last piece of coverage. This is our drummer. Now he's gonna be a single and normally these people would go take a break Of course, they're not gonna actually be performing while you're shooting the drummer What I'm doing here that I normally wouldn't do on most of the setups is I'm actually above uh, His his like mid midline here with the camera and I'm tilted down a little bit and I'll show you why I want to do that I would rather have the camera not tilted and actually I don't like seeing so much This is the curve of the psych that horizon. It's kind of subtle but the reason I actually came up higher versus shooting this level is because I want to see the top of these symbols because the top of these symbols have this nice glancing shallow angle reflection from the white psych. And I don't really like shooting up at symbols. A lot of times you tape them and the underside of symbols, I don't really like them. I'm a drummer too, so I have, t I have, I have my, my taste about symbols. I, look, I like looking at the top of symbols like this and it kind of gives us um, a good view of this whole drum set. So that was our look at lighting a white psych. Again, this is relying on a white wall that is pure white light it as evenly as possible, and then a floor that is black and reflective. So black plexi, black rubber. You can paint concrete with shiny black paint. There's a lot of ways to do it. I've done basically all of them. The best is the rubber, in my opinion. I even think plexi is a little bit like fragile, and the seams look really bad because plexi comes in four by eight pieces, whereas the rubber 
comes in four foot rolls they can roll out for like 32 yards super expensive i did this once for a music video that was recreating kind of a taylor swift um shake it off vibe i actually wrote an article on uh, shake it off and then got called because of that article to shoot a music video like that uh funny enough so blogging can get you work as a dp uh I am the proof of that. And we used the rollout plastic. I don't remember the exact name. Maybe I can find a link for it somewhere. It was mostly the production designers find. But that is the idea. You're reflecting the whites like into the black. And then you want to add as little as light possible to not disrupt the silhouettes that are going to be happening. And then you want to use negative fill to preserve some of the silhouettes. And you saw that with the lead singer shot. And in general, you want to keep the shots kind of at level. You don't want to be tilting down or up too much. Uh, in a studio job in general, but this type of music video, in my opinion, looks good with somewhat more telephoto lenses, so your 40 to 50 to 65 mil, that sort of thing, for your wides. Our wide shot was a 32 because it was a dolly shot, that's pretty good, but you want to keep it kind of level because you want to keep this horizon between the psych wall and the floor in the shot. Keeping the, keeping the camera level will help you do that. So I hope you guys learned something from this. If you get a music video that wants to have a similar look, if you're talking to a director that's like, hey, we want it to kind of look like this, now you know at least the high-level concepts that go into it. So that wraps it up for this video. All of these images were created with my plugin called Cine Designer. It is becoming quickly the industry standard for visualizing camera work and lighting like you saw in this video. You can learn more about that at CineDesigner.com. Cine Designer R2 is coming out very soon. There's a lot of new stuff in it. I'm going to be doing a whole lot of new tutorials on my secondary YouTube channel, which is dedicated to actually teaching the nitty gritty of recreating this type of work for your jobs or for whatever reason, whatever you want to be doing with the Cine Designer. Uh, it's coming out pretty soon. So if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. We've got a lot more coming. If you want to learn about cinematography, I really don't know a better place to do it than right here. Give us a like, give us a comment uh, about some music video stuff that you like. What are some of the looks that you have interests in? I can basically take a still from any music video and without the BTS, I can make a video like this explaining it. And if you're wondering why it's so noisy in here, that's my AC, it's on full blast. I think I'm starting to sweat now. And uh, that's because I think it's literally like 105 degrees outside. So I have the AC on. Sue me. I'll see you guys on the next episode. You guys get out there and plan better, shoot better. Cheers, bye.